There we are. Hey guys, good morning. Good morning, Bullhorn Betty with our breaking daily updates. It's nice to see you this morning. This segment is sponsored by our beautiful subscribers here on TikTok for our beautiful subscribers here on TikTok. Before we get started this morning, I hope everyone is happy, having a happy Wednesday. Happy hump day, folks. Happy hump day. We have just a, a small little segue before we get started on Sebastian Rogers this morning. This is Layla Santanello. Before I was covering Sebastian, I was covering Layla Santanello. Please check out all of my videos on Layla Santanello. Layla Santanello has been missing since last year, June 26, 27th ish. Uh, she was at the AmeriCorps Hotel in Kingsport, Tennessee. There was something going on. I personally spoke to one of the witnesses out there that saw her and told me that she was very frantic. Uh, about something. They don't know what. She was frantic about something and took off from the AmeriCorps and ran to the woods. The next morning, there was a girl that was described with what she was wearing as uh, going up to um, the, she came out of the woods and somebody saw her coming out of the woods. But when we went to the marble slab for a really long time, we thought she was the lady at the marble slab, had no shoes on, black pants, uh, a white tank top, just as described as Layla, and they're saying that that was another woman running from her husband. So there were two ladies that were in identical clothing in a, in a fairly similar uh, appearance, description-wise, seen around the same time. Both, were, you know, uh, so I don't know if Layla actually went I know she didn't go to the marble slab from what we're hearing so the last sighting of her was literally leaving the AmeriCorps hotel and running into the woods I have to believe the next morning the gentleman around 7 30 8 o'clock between 7 30 8 30 something I can't remember the specific time don't quote me on that but he saw what appeared to be Layla coming out and she was searching in the looking for something and he was asking her what she was looking for and she asked him if he had a cigarette and so that was the last conversation that we know for for a fact to be Layla. And, and he described her as Layla. But see, this is my problem. If the woman at the um, the woman that was described at the marble slab creamery running from her husband, was that the same person as the person that the gentleman saw coming out of the woods? You know. I, I I got no, nothing for it. I got nothing, you know, I don't know. So I so since then, I've changed my date to her missing between June 26th and June 27th. Um, they're saying June 27th, but she was around AmeriCorps in um, Kingsport, Tennessee and, and disappeared. So that's kind of where we are. So thank you for letting me take the, take, you know, bend your ear just a little bit on Layla Santanella. She hasn't been found. The reward has increased. They're looking for any information to her whereabouts. Um, her boyfriend has been arrested for sending some text messages to her mother demanding money and, and making other statements like um, because he was anonymous saying, I've got your daughter, or I'm going to, you know, chop her, you know, whatever and dispose of her if you don't pay me this money, basically is what was said. But, um, you know, he says that that was a lie. He just wanted to get, you know, whatever. This is, I, I saw this on Facebook and I kind of captured it and I really liked it because I feel like sometimes people have an ability when they get a little upset that they bring people, other people with them, you know? And I thought that this was important. I wanted to read it to all, you, all of you. And it says, one of the biggest mistakes in life is to allow yourself to be recruited by someone to hate another human being who has never wronged you. Only fools inherit other people's enemies as some weird sign of loyalty. And so thank you guys. God bless you. I see a couple new members. Thank you. Thank you for your love and support. So I thought that that was really interesting because, you know, I find that this, there's a sector out there almost, if you will, a sector of people that no matter what are never happy. You bring this person, they're never happy because it should have been this person. Uh, you know, even it's never, nobody is ever happy. When we deal with true crime cases 
and um, what happens in them, people think that their way is the right way. I've always been taught there's multiple ways to skin a cat. You know, that's just, uh, you know, we don't know what happened here. We don't know what the right direction is here. We have to trust the guidance of Seth Rogers, the father of a missing boy, because he's really the only one leading the charge in finding Sebastian and he brings on people on his team. And when he brings on this person or that person, people don't like them. You know, they find every single reason not to like them. They start digging into that. I could care less about somebody's past. You know what my, my thing is, is what are you doing? Are you going to have results? What results are you looking for? Do you have a game plan? If they have all those things, who gives a rat's ass what's in their past? We're here for results. I'm looking, you know, personally speaking, if I had a child missing, I would be looking for that underdog, you know, because usually it's the underdog that gets it. So just remember that, you know, for all the people out there trying to beat up people and, you know, just for trying to care about a child, I just find it, um, you know, I find it wrong, personally speaking. I just find it wrong. Where am I? Uh... I keep forgetting this is all I I don't know how I do this I, I I get all my stuff together and I still oh I did end up getting it up there and I still manage to get these out of order whenever I'm talking to you guys <laughs> forgive me <laughs> it's the bullhorn Betty show and it's early in the morning I'm entertaining you folks okay get over it it's not gonna be a perfect show <laughs> So I found this interesting and I wanted to get your, and this is to wait until I'm done and I want to get my audience um, opinion on this. So Sebastian's father has been interviewed thoroughly and vetted. And, and this person, whoever posted this said they just spoke to, spoke with the district attorney. So I'm just going to read it. I don't know who this is. I can't remember. I just spoke with the district attorney, Ray Whitley. He cares deeply about this case, meets regularly with investigators for up to date um, for updates. He tells me there is simply no proof. Right, This sounds like Nick Barris. He simply tells me there's no proof right now to support charging anyone with a crime. I can I can possibly agree with that. I don't think that they're there yet. I absolutely agree with that. And you don't charge someone lightly. You do that. The, you do that, they are found not guilty at trial, and it's over. I find it interesting how he's touting this. Then if, then if you, it says, then if you knew evidence surface, it, I think he meant this, then if new evidence, he put you in here, but if new evidence surface surfaces implication, implying the same person, you cannot charge them again. That's called double jeopardy. All I can say is the men and women with Sumner County Sheriff's, Sheriff's SO and TBI continue to chase down all leads and, in my opinion, have done a terrific do job leaving no stone unturned. Unlike many outsiders criticizing them, I'm here and have seen their efforts firsthand. Trust me, I'd call them out if I thought they were, they were not doing their job. So what happened to Sebastian? The mystery remains... The bottom line for me, the bottom line for me, question mark. I don't know. I think he needs to rewrite this. But uh, children do not vanish without a trace, barring some very unusual circumstances. I think someone else was involved, but who? And where is the evidence? So someone else is involved, but who? That's. It sounds like that is Nick Barris's opinion. So I might as well go ahead on over to the, the Nick Barris that I pulled up earlier. There it is, and then there's a part two to this. It's an update for, there's a part two for this. So I would like to ask you, here is what I've actually said to this comment, and I made my comment pretty clear, pretty stinking clear here. Let me get to that one, because I'm, I, I've got a lot to say about this, okay, about his, you know, statement. Not that I'm blaming Nick. Nick is just, you know, he's the messenger. I, I, I can't make him, per, you know, poop news, right? Um, he, he has to, he gets what he gets and that's it. So I just think he needs to push a little harder here because this is what my problem is. 
They're saying there's no evidence. Okay, then explain the lack of evidence that he even walked out of the door of the of the house. They haven't done. They haven't even done forensic in his room. That was the last place he was at. Nothing. So if you're not looking for evidence of foul play, how are you going to get it? Lastly, I have to believe Ellie would tell us. I, lastly, I'd have to believe that Ellie would actually tell us if there's evidence supporting one of the parents had something to do with this, which I don't. He won't even provide the public with a press release. No, he's lost my trust. I believe this will turn cold while they're playing cop. Sorry, it's just how I feel. I personally feel they're going nowhere. Katie's implying they're under constant surveillance. Ellie doesn't do that to normal parents of runaway of a runaway child. So what gives? Thanks, Nick, for, Nick, for your updates. This case is frustrating. Uh, keeping the community informed. Let me get over to that part. Ah, where's my other part of it? This is all cattywampus. They don't have my other part to this. Let me get over here. Maybe I can read it from here. Depo so it says right here, he won't even provide the public with a press release. He's lost my trust. I believe this will turn cold while they're playing cops. Sorry. It's just how I feel. Like, this is my opinion. I'm not saying that this is what's really happening. It's just my opinion. I personally feel they're going nowhere. Katie, Katie implied they're under constant surveillance. Ellie doesn't do that to parent, normal parents of runaway child. So what gives? Thanks, Nick, Nick, for your update. This case is frustrating. Keeping the community informed is just as important, and they have failed. I believe they can't. They can, let me get out of the way. I believe I believe they can have good public relations and keep the integrity of the investigation, but they're not. So the end of this does go. To, so in the end, if this second of so I misspelled too. If this does go cold, their jobs are on the line, because I can tell you if this case goes cold and they fail to keep the public informed while we're feeling uncomfortable about a case. I, 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 I don't believe that the uh, people in that community will, I believe that their jobs would absolutely be on the line. That's just my personal belief, but um, I could be very, 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 very wrong with that. Sorry about that. I don't know why the second um, screenshot did not take for some reason. We had some breaking news on Micah Miller this week. I don't know if you guys remember, Micah Miller was the uh, pastor's wife that... Um, was found in a river in North Carolina. She left a lot of cryptic messages pointing her finger at her husband. It sounds like her husband had been abusing her even though he's been a pastor. We looked at some of his congregation uh, videos, you know, his sermons, and I have to say my eyebrows went up. Uh, it didn't seem, it, he, he, didn't, he didn't seem like he was really a godly person. It seems like he was in it for more the the financial aspect of it, which he has garnered a lot of wealth from it. And it sounds to me from what I've looked into that there are some major problems, you know, behind the scenes. It looks like there might have been a hint of tax fraud, a hint of mortgage fraud, a hint of, um, you know, transfer of property, fraudulent transfer of properties. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here that I believe is federal. And that's why uh, he was going. I I don't, I'm starting to get a picture that this guy really hurt Micah in, in more ways than you can imagine. Um, I felt, I feel like she felt suffocated and, and felt like she was never getting out. But I also believed that she had planned on doing this for a while at this point. I believe that she set all of the pieces in motion before she did what she did. I believe she had everything set up so when this happened, JP would not survive. He would be here. He would obviously physically survive. But I think she wanted to bring the smoke and mirrors, the screen, the, the cloud of deception that he's been able, the facade. I think she truly wanted to bring it to his knees and expose this man for everything that she's went through, his lifetime of, of abuse toward her. And I think she had a plan. I think she was very strategic and I think she executed it. Whether we agree with her reasoning or not, 
you know, a lot of people say that you have to have mental illness or something to not want to be here. You know, I think people, I, I truly, you know, I don't, I don't want to speculate whether she was, had, had problems or not, or if this was part of the abuse toward her. I am venturing to say that this was part of the abuse toward her because it sounds like there was a lot of people in that church that helped JP do some of the things he did. Uh, one of them was his attorney, which is attorneys under federal um, investigation as well. So, you know, was the doctor, did they inappropriately put her away? Did they put her on medication she shouldn't have need? Did they intentionally screw up her brain or was she truly, I don't know. I definitely don't believe JP and I don't believe anybody that he works with because I think they're evil. So the people that want justice for Micah, even though it's not going to be, Micah's not going to be there on that, on that indictment, I think she is getting justice. So I think this is all part of her justice. So as creepy as that sounds, as sad as that sounds, you know, from the grave or whatnot, I, I really think she did this. I really think she did this intentionally. And um, I think this is her justice. I really do. And we need to keep supporting that because he deserves, he deserves everything he gets. I'm sorry. What that man did to that woman is just, it's awful. It is absolutely awful. Mm. There's Renee. Good gracious. I can't find anything I'm looking for today. <laughs> Good gracious. Oh. I've been following this case from the first day. I live in Goodlettsville and Hendersonville area for about eight years and grew up in nearby or in nearby Robertson County. My kids went to Sumner County School. I'm very familiar with Long Hollow geographical area. It's very bizarre. It's a very bizarre situation. This was something that uh, was posted back in April. And I still, you know, I'm going back to the beginning of the case. And of course, I'm reviewing it. And so this one really kind of stuck out at me. Now, I, I, get, I get that there is no evidence of foul play. I, I find it wildly odd that, you know, a 15-year-old autistic boy that doesn't even like cleaning his room is, is able to vanish without a trace willingly with no shoes and no electronics that he treasures. And he's an autistic boy that puts on shoes and lives for video games. But whatever. So she's very familiar with the uh, geographical situation. One, Sebastian uh, did come from the, uh, the Texas Roadhouse. Two, CP was not there initially. This is just a theory, guys. This is just a theory. I wanted to make sure that we, we know this is not factual information. Just FYI, anybody that's tuning in, this is not factual. This is somebody's theory that's perked my curiosity. One, Sebastian did come, come home from the Texas Roadhouse. Two, CP, which is noted as Chris Proudfoot, was not there initially when KP and Sebastian arrived home. Katie may have had some drinks at the Roadhouse. Katie... And Sebastian got into a disagreement and Katie struck him in the head. Katie panicked and called uh, Chris. Chris called his mother and they devised a plan uh, to dis dispose of Sebastian. Uh, CP's mom, which is Kathy Bowersox, sends CP's stepbrother, Junior, over to assist Kat Katie with the disposal. Junior pulls into the subdivision with lights off Junior signals KP, light signal that he has arrived. Katie signals back. They meet in the concrete area. Uh, previous KP, which is Katie, wrapped Sebastian in something. They loaded him up in, junior, in Junior's vehicle. And then Junior takes Sebastian to an undisclosed location. Then places into a barrel. She thinks that HA is used, which is hydrochloric acid. Um, KP and CP remain on the phone through the entire process. That is a theory. I think that that's a little 
you know, I think it's plausible though. I think it could be plausible. It's not, it's not, you know, we've heard stuff like this in the past. But I found it interesting because I know that everybody's trying to get us off the parents. Nothing is going to get us off the parents other than law enforcement telling us they have passed their polygraph test or they're look, taking the investigation into a different direction. So if law enforcement wants us to, to, to stop with all the speculation for the parents, then they need to do a press release or a press conference. They owe the public. I'm so sick of people they, saying they don't owe the public anything. If they don't owe the public anything, then please, and I'm serious about this, and people can get pissed off at me all day long, then don't come to the public asking for a paycheck. Because it's that very public that's making sure you and your family are eating, and all we're asking for you is to keep them informed, like you're supposed to. Every other outfit is able to do this, but somehow Sumner County is unable to walk and chew gum. We're not asking them to disclose the integrity of the investigation for love of everything that is holy. All we're asking them for is, do you guys have an idea where the hell Sebastian may have gone? Is there any tracks to a specific location? Can you send searchers in a specific area? You know, can you give us anything? This nonsense of we still just have a missing person is getting old. It's getting old and there's a child out there missing that may be dead. He needs to come home and he needs to be found. And I'm sorry, you have well-bodied people out there searching when law enforcement won't. So maybe inform them. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I don't know what's going on with my car, but I'm 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 getting to the point where I've just about, you know, kind of had it with all of this stuff. So, obviously, we've got to get out there. There's no ifs ands or buts about it. We've got to get out there. Uh, we need to find out what's going on. You know, law enforcement can tell me to take a hike. They can do that all day long. But they they they're going to hear my message very loud and clear because the public deserves something. We deserve some some answers. And I'm sorry, I Nick, I, I love you, but I think you're being played by your law enforcement. Because at the end of the day, I don't think they would tell you if they did have any information. They slow walked the information to you about Sebastian, about it not being Sebastian in North Carolina. I know that for a fact. While you were sitting there for 24 hours covering their ass, giving them an extra day, we all had the information over here on social media that it wasn't him. It had already been confirmed not to be him. So you're Eric Craddock, dude. You're going to have to start w working around him. I don't know what else to tell you. You're going to have to do, you're going to have to quit picking up the phone and start fact checking him. Because I just feel like if you would have picked up the phone and called law enforcement out in, out in um, North Carolina, you would have been a privy to the information. But you waited on Eric to give it to you. I don't know what to say. You know? I don't know what to say. I would say that um, it's time for you to start maybe applying a little more pressure and not being so nice to him because he lied to you twice that I can tell. Just FYI, Nick. Just FYI. Uh, there's another one in here. Let me put, I'm going to put Sebastian. I think that what it'll be easier is just let me put Sebastian's um, photo up here. I think that'll be the easiest because, you know, we need to remember what it's all about, right? He's missing. It's all about him. It's not about us. It's not about all this drama. It's not about anything. It's about him and finding him. And this is the way I help find him. You know, people don't understand what I'm doing and that's okay. Uh, right now, I'm trying to get law enforcement to open their, their freaking mouth, if you haven't noticed. A lot of my stuff is publicly applying pressure and letting people know to start calling the DA's office and start calling Sumner County Sheriff's office and demanding a and hell, throw TBI in there too. Start calling their offices too. Nobody's been updated for this little boy. He's 15 year old, medically needy child that nobody can tell us where he's at, if he's dead, if he's alive. Meanwhile, they're dangling their parents, throwing their parents through all these emotional roller coasters. If they have something you know, that's going to get the pressure off the proud foots, bring the receipts for the love of everything holy. How can, how can taking pressure off two innocent people really tank the integrity of the investigation? I have never in my life heard 
in a million years of all these cases we cover that coming to a podium and clearing two innocent people that have come under target by social media, literally millions of people. I don't know how that, that can damage a case. So law enforcement, if the Proudfoots have passed their polygraph, you're not looking at them. I don't see how that's going to tank your case. Tell the public. For everything holy, these people deserve peace. They deserve peace from crazy people like Bullhorn Betty. You know? It's not fair. We got crying babies over here. <laughs> I need to change his diapers. You know, I need to be able to dry some tears out of his eyes. I think law enforcement, d d you know, we deserve something. We deserve something. If this man had nothing to do with it, I mean, come on. If this thumbnail does not, like, literally embody why we need a press conference, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's pooping all over himself. You know he is. You know, we got baby and diaper needs to be changed. Mommy dearest is missing. If we need to stop this, Law enforcement, then tell us. I mean, I don't understand why you would put this these parents through all of this. These innocent, sweet parents that have literally done nothing but give this boy a great life and, and all the bells and whistles he could ever imagine. You know, how dare us be out here accusing these lovely family? I mean, these innocent parents deserve their justice, Eric Craddock. So we need you to let us know that they have, that the, you know, the direction of your investigation is going somewhere. Oh, that investigation that you're not having. That, that, that investigation that they're not having. We need to know what the direction of that, because we know this is not a missing child case. Because this lady right here has posted some things that imply that you guys are literally keeping her under constant surveillance. So is she under surveillance? Is she not under surveillance? Law enforcement knows everything I do. I've never heard a parent of a missing child ever say that to me before. Except, well, Don Wells. I think that was really the only one. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's other ones. Maybe there's other ones. I don't know. I don't know. But this, this implies that she's under constant surveillance to me. So if she's under constant surveillance, does that sound normal to you? So while Eric and everybody is saying, oh, there's no evidence of foul play, well, then how are you guys able to put this lady under constant surveillance if there's no evidence of foul play? Like, math ain't math in here. They're talking out of both sides of their mouth, and Nick now appears to be part of that that whole misinformation campaign, the controlled um, information that we le that we need to be told because they don't want us really thinking. Because don't you know they they want to want to tell us what to think, not how to think. I like to know, you know, what's going on. I like using my problem solving process, problem solving processes. Right? Those that 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 public education. That's one of the first things that I learned was problem solving in school. Right? I think we learned it before we got to school. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right, guys. So for my members, my members, my members here on TikTok, what do you guys think happened? Do you guys still, let me ask you guys this. Do you still believe in what you originally thought? Like when this case first came out, and you know how those initial speculations that, you know, the, the fact finding we do initially, what, what has changed? So have you had like a theory that he walked out the door and now it's changed to you think something, something else has happened? 
Hey guys, it's nice to see you. I'm gonna go up here and see. I know a lot of people uh, came in here. I'm sorry, it's on it's on members or subscribers only to comment uh, right now because this is sponsored by our subscribers only, our afternoon. I know I've left it off subscriber only mode, but in all fairness, this, this first uh, live is always for our subs by our subs. So I'd like to give them the opportunity. It's nice to see you. So what I think happened when I first initially came out, I you know, it's it's the true crime person in me. I always side eye parents because I've done too many of these cases. Period. If you have a missing child, expect Bullhorn Betty to side eye you immediately. Period. Right? I side eye the I side eye the parents immediately and the people that they're around. I try to find out very quickly on who was the last person to make contact with that child or see that child. And if and, and from that point forward, that's where I start mine because that's pretty much ground zero for me is where was the last person seen. So as you can imagine, the ground zero for me in this case is that home. He That was the last place he was seen. He lives there. Uh, he was inside his home and there's no explanation on where he could be because in all fairness, nobody has seen him not even his mother. His mother cannot 100% confirm that this child walked out that front door unless she saw him walk out that front door. Thank you, thank you guys. So that is really where we're at. You're not going to get, I don't understand how forensics, see, you you can't really get a court order without probable cause. You can't really get, um, so if they do have a court action open right now, they're gonna be filing stuff in there. Some of the stuff is going to go under seal. We will not even know about it. Thank you, Josephine, God bless you. So is there something really going on? I don't trust, nice to see you, Priscilla, thank you. I don't trust, I honestly do not trust Eric Craddock to be honest with us. I really don't. I don't think Eric Craddock's going to come out here and say that Chris or Katie took or passed or failed their polygraph test. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think they're going to come out here and tell us that they have found any some information that leads to the fact that Sebastian may or may not have been abused inside that home. I don't see them coming to the podium and telling us any of those information. Will they tell us, you know, at least it has there been... Um, findings that there were reports open, I think they can factually say yes. I think it's widely known that there are there there was a CPS or some type of CPS investigation in the past, right? So that's kind of where we are. I don't think there. I don't think Eric Craddock's going to tell Nick anything. I think Nick. I think Eric Craddock is using is now um, using Nick to funnel the controlled information to everybody. And I don't like that. I don't like being controlled. Um, I think that there's more like he came out with a bang and he kind of got, I think he kind of got his toes, he stepped on toes. And then I think he got, I don't know if his company kind of told him to tone it down or not, but it seems like he's now working more with uh, Eric, which I think is good. We need we need uh, media working with law enforcement, but I don't think he's working with. I think he's now becoming the mouthpiece for them, if if you will. I I don't know that to be true. I'd like to I'd like to to see him challenge some of the questions law enforcement's giving him. Like, how are you saying? You know, like Katie's implying online that she's under surveillance. How are you? You know, why is he not asking these tough questions at this point? Is my question. You know, are they under surveillance? Because if they're under surveillance, Katie, and then to follow up with Katie has implied that you guys are, uh, she's under surveillance. So do you normally put parents of missing, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, where's the questioning? Where is the dissection of the answers here? And that's where I'm at. I don't feel like there's any dissection. I feel like he, I feel like Nick might be getting played by Eric. I think Eric's holding his case close to his chest. I, I, I understand why Eric's doing what he's doing. I can't imagine how difficult this is, but they have to get some type of messaging. It, it, it is going to be detrimental if they don't. This case is entirely too large 
for them to ghost the public. They are literally going to create a a a a nightmare for themselves. I can I can I'm telling you, I know social media. I've been here for a while. I can already see people getting antsy. I can already, you know, they're already starting to set up, you know, calling active. There's going to be it's only going to be so much before there's going to be probably 100 people in that community. You see what I'm saying? Like they're they're really pushing an envelope that they don't want to push. I mean, I would literally and I'm I, I'm not saying this from me. I ain't pushing this stuff. But I'm seeing it happening behind the scenes. And it's only a matter of time before they're going to have a bunch of people flying into their community. This is a national case. This is a worldwide case at this point. And they have ghosted the public. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I know people. And I know people's emotions. It's only going to be so much before people start rising up and demand, and literally demanding answers. And I can already see it getting there because usually it's me kind of instigating phone calls and instigating mailing cam- campaigns and instigating this i haven't had to instigate squat i haven't had I, like i'm i'm finding people doing this so that tells me that this is a different dynamic that i haven't seen before people are pissed and uh you know all i got to say all i got to say is they need to leave you know they need to leave either a message they need to leave a um a statement on their facebook they need to prepare a a press conference or a press release that is my opinion because again usually it's me saying hey we need a mail campaign hey we need to make these calls hey we need to get out there they've already had a protest out there They've already had actually two different ones. They've now there's a whole campaign right now of people calling the DAs, the sheriff's office, and, and, and TBI, I believe, demanding answers. If this is not enough to start pushing TBI in Sumner County, I can tell you the next step is people showing up to Sumner County and 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 throwing a uh, an absolute fit in that county. Um, I don't know what else to say. I can just tell you, I'm seeing it coming. <laughs> you know, and when it's there, they can sit there, bitch, moan and groan all they want, but they did it to themselves. And it's sad because you, in, in you know, we deal with politicians and, and yes, a sheriff is a politician. Um, I deal with them all the time. And one of the, the biggest jobs that they have is public relations in an intense investigation, Okay. It is something that seasoned people should be should know how to do. Okay, every country, every county, every county, country. <laughs> it feels like that with some of our states, doesn't it? Um, every you know county, every city, every state goes with major crime. Okay, and these people know how to maintain the public relations, keep the public calm. Meanwhile, maintaining the integrity of the investigation. And I feel, in my opinion, that Sumner County, honestly, is failing in the public relations department. And yes, it's a major part of their job. I, I'm so sick of people saying that this is, we're not entitled. They're entitled to inform the public. What they inform the public with is up to them. But this idea, we're not entitled to be informed, is hogwash. These are county and public employees. I don't know where people's brain cells are. I know cops want you to think that you're not entitled to this. I'm sorry, I am a political activist that deals with public records and public record laws literally on the daily. I know for a fact the public is due information. (laughs) Period. And guess what? The law entitles us to certain information. Holy smokes. Imagine that. Mind blown. So this idea that we're not entitled, they can keep doing that smoke and mirrors and people can keep picking up the baton and tap dancing to that song and dance. But I'm not one of those people because I am educated. I do understand that they do owe the public public relations. And they're not getting it. So take it for what you will. I think law enforcement, it's been long enough. It's time for you to to give the public an update. 
What is the path forward? You owe them that. You owe them that. All right, guys. God bless. We're still on the drumbeat trying to bring answers for Sebastian Rogers. Where is he at? What happened to Sebastian? If you guys have some things that you didn't want to state here or you want to let me know privately or confidentially, I am always available through my email. My email is by far one of the best ways to get a hold of me or get your information into my hot little hands. That is bullhornbetty at gmail.com. Bullhorn, B-U-L-L-H-O-R-N, Betty, B-E-T-T-Y, right? Bullhornbetty at gmail.com. If you have any information that's going to lead to the whereabouts of Sebastian Rogers, I would ask you to call law enforcement first. But of course, you can always leak it here on the Bullhorn Betty Show. I'm here for you. We're here for this case. We're here for Sebastian Rogers. Um, I truly believe, I don't care until law enforcement has the, the gonads not to keep using talking pieces to tell us their, their BS. I'd like them just to put together a press release. If they truly don't believe, they can tell, listen, let me just break it down for you. If they can tell Nick that, they're, that the parents are not being investigated or looked at at this moment, if that's what they're telling Nick, then they can tell you that from a reliable source, okay? Because let's face it, I want to hold that Eric Haddock, Craddock's feet to the fire, right? If he lies to a news person and a news person peddles his lies, who's there? To, who's, who's to hold accountable? Nick would be held accountable, not Eric that fed him the wrong information. I want Eric to state what Nick is saying he said. Because if we're looking at the wrong area or some, you know, boogeyman broke into their house and was able to lock their front door, if that happened, you know, I'd like to know it. I, I definitely like, would like to start turning my focus on the boogeyman, okay? Just saying, just saying. From one boogeyman hunter to another, you know? Just saying. All right, guys, rock it out with your coffee beans out. This will not be the first live. I'm sure this is going to have some drama in it today. I don't know why. It's just this case keeps attracting it. So as we advocate for finding Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, we are going to continue to keep you informed on all the twists and turns in this case. Do I believe Eric Craddock? My answer is no, I don't. Because I haven't heard from him. I've been hearing reports of things he may or allegedly said to maybe a reporter or two. But these reporters have cameras and microphones, yet none of this was videotaped. Why, why won't he give a television interview if he doesn't want to do a press conference? A trusted source, a trusted partner. Hey, maybe Nick Barris can do that interview again. I would like to see another Nick Barris interview with Eric Craddock. I got a list of questions. I'm sure, I'm sure Nick has the same list. That happened. Really should have a press call. It, it, they, I'm telling you, I'm hearing rumblings behind the scenes. And I'm, I'm telling you, Hendersonville did it to themselves. That's all I'm saying. I can't say a whole lot, but you know what? When I throw when I throw little nuggets out that I can't say that I'm saying, they need to take a clue. They need to take a, they need to take an understanding. You're pissing a lot of people off, and it's about to be knocking at your front door. Just saying. So take it for what you will. I don't really care. Um, you know, law. All I'm saying is law enforcement is, needs to get their public relations under control. I'm telling you, you heard it here on Bullhorn Betty first. They need to get their public relations under control because people are getting pissed. And when you got pissed off citizens, you're gonna have yourself a you're gonna have yourself a circus show. I mean, I'm sorry. People are only gonna stand by without lack of information before they start knocking on their door. I'm just saying. I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. We'll see what comes of all of this, but um, I have a funny feeling something something people are getting pissed. If you guys would like to participate in the activism, please pick up the phone and dial, reach out to uh, the DA's office out there, reach out to TBI, reach out to Sumner County, tell them we're, we're demanding, we're demanding um, something. 
uh, a path forward. Give us, give it, let us know that you're doing something. This, this, this is, this is getting nuts. All right, guys, love you. Rock it out. See you soon. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment for your favorite content creator, yours truly, me.